Well, the first part of this course started out talking about the, uh, the concepts behind linear mathematics. We talked about solving systems of linear equations and then build on those topics through the use of matrices and uh, operations with matrices, and then use that to uh, solve problems with uh, linear programming. And then we moved to the second phase of the course, and that was math of finance, where we learned how to uh, compute simple and compound interest and uh, future and present values of annuities. And now we're going to move into the third phase of the course, and that revolves around probability and statistics. So since this topic is uh, new to a lot of students, what we'll do uh, in this section is to just lay the groundwork for some of the um, operations that we're going to compute with probability later on. So um, in, in slide number uh, three, let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to discuss in this chapter. Uh, first, we'll define a population and a sample and then distinguish between the notions of statistical inference and probability. And then we'll define a probability experiment. And then we'll determine if the order is important in a sample. And, and that's something that's uh, important for us through the, uh, for the idea of combinatorics later on. And then we'll determine if events can happen at the same time. And that relates to uh, the idea of independence. Uh, will help us compute probabilities later. And uh, then we'll determine if one, uh, the outcome of one event influences another. All right, so in slide number four, let's start out with our fundamental definitions here. First, we can say that a population is the collection of all outcomes, responses, measurements, or counts that are of interest. So a lot of times our population consists of um, uh, maybe like all the students at a school or maybe all the students who go to colleges and universities throughout the country, that kind of thing. However, we want to define the population. And then a sample is a subset of the population. Notice I use the word subset because we're going to tie the concepts together of sets and probability, there are actually two ideas that are very closely related. Now, in the study of probability, we use information about a population to make some sort of inference about the nature of a sample. And uh, that study is called statistical inference. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Here, think of this Think of this blob as kind of being a, a big population. And this population has some, um, it has some uh, values associated with it. It could be a mean, I'll use the Greek letter mu. It could be a standard deviation, I'll use the, um, uh, the Greek letter sigma. And then within this population, we could have a sample. Let me just kind of make that a little small blob inside here. And let me pull that out. And that sample also has um, some numerical values associated with it. It could have a mean. We'll give it a name. We'll call it X bar. And it could have a standard deviation. We'll call it S. So what we're trying to do with statistical inference is really just kind of the opposite through statistical inference. We're trying to take a sample, and let's say it has size little n, and from it we're going to make a generalization about the population as a whole. And that's what statistical inference is all about. All right, so let's take a look at our first example here. And let's classify the following as an example of probability or statistical inference. First, um, how about this? A randomly selected sample of 1,061 American adults, 18 years or older, were asked, could the entire moon program have been an elaborate deception staged to fool the public? There were people who who've, uh, thought this was true in the past, that... Um, uh, that the uh, Apollo program really wasn't real. It was all staged on a movie set. 
um, among that sample, 944 of them did not believe that uh, the Apollo moon landing was staged or faked. All right. So what we want to do, we'll keep that one in mind. We want to decide whether that's an example of statistical inference or uh, of probability. All right. So let's go ahead and solve this before we go any further. Let me make a little bit more room here. So example one. Here's our solution. Well, think about it here. Here's a case where we have information that is gathered from a sample. So this is an example of statistical inference. All right. So that's uh, part A. Now, let's move on here and take a look at another one here. Uh, in slide number six, uh, let's classify this as an example uh, as um, an example of probability or statistical inference. So how about this? In 1997, 10.8% of female smokers smoked cigars. In a sample of 20 female smokers selected at random, two of them smoked cigars. Well, think about it. Here's a case where the process um, represents a probability experiment. And the reason being, let's take, take a look at this again. It looks like that we have some measure here, 10.8% for an entire population. And then we took a sample of 20 and we term, determined that really about 10% of those smoke cigars. So that's what probability is all about. Now, in the second part, um, we'll move along 